Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about how to launch a front wheel drive car. Now if you haven't yet watched my video on how to launch a rear wheel drive car, you may want to watch that first because I dive deeper into the math in that video than I'm going to in this video. Now, first of all, we're gonna get through the process, then we're gonna do a little bit of math, uh, but more importantly, talk about how to improve the acceleration of your front wheel drive car. So the process, of course, if it's an automatic, put your foot on the brake and the accelerator. If it's a manual, put your foot on the accelerator and the clutch, release either the clutch or the brake, and off you go. Now, the important part here is load transfer and modulating the throttle uh, as you have load transfer to the rear tires rather than the front because we're, of course, accelerating with those front tires. So this is where you have to be careful. So with a front wheel drive car, as you're accelerating, you're transferring load to those rear tires, which means as you accelerate, the maximum rate at which you can accelerate the front tires decreases because they have less weight on them. So if we start with a vehicle with a 50-50 weight distribution, half the weight on the front tire, half the weight on the rear tire, and we have a frictional coefficient of one, one times half, uh, which is the amount of weight on the front tire, it gives us our maximum acceleration for that moment. So statically, a front wheel drive car could accelerate at half a G. However, as you start to accelerate, you transfer load to the rear tire and you lose load on the front tire, which means you can no longer accelerate at that same rate. So this is kind of what makes it very simple to spin the tires on a front wheel drive car because as you transfer load to the rear, you lessen the load on the front and then it makes it easier for those to spin. So you have to be really careful with your throttle modulation um, and you can change these characteristics. So let's dive a little bit into the math here. Here we have an equation which I pulled uh, very similar to the one I use in my rear wheel drive video. So I go more into the derivation of that in that video. Uh, so anyways, if we plug in all these variables here, what we're trying to find out with this equation is what is the maximum rate at which it balances out where that uh, front wheel drive car can accelerate continuously at a certain g-force um, having the load balance between the front and the rear. And so when you plug in all of these variables into that equation, it gives us a maximum acceleration force of 0.416 g's. And so if you recall uh, in our video on the rear wheel drive video, the maximum acceleration was 0.625 G's with this same setup. So the same setup in a front wheel drive car, significantly less uh, acceleration uh, based on the grip of the tires. Now this is assuming we have plenty of power in order to accelerate, but this isn't really that high of a number. So it would be fairly easy to exceed that and then spin the tires. So you wanna increase this number. How do you increase the maximum acceleration possible of a front wheel drive vehicle, assuming you have the power, you just don't have the grip? Well, here's our five methods right here. So we can lower the center of gravity. Um, so for example, if we take this, which is at half a meter currently, and drop that center of gravity down to a quarter of a meter, that's gonna allow us to accelerate at 0.45 repeating Gs. So a slight increase over the 0.416 there. We could also increase the wheelbase. So if we go from 2.5 meters to three meters, we can increase the maximum acceleration to 0.429 Gs. And these are unique benefits to a front wheel drive vehicle because if you lower the CG or increase the wheelbase on a rear wheel drive vehicle, you're going to be decreasing the maximum acceleration. So it's kind of cool that front wheel drive vehicles do have that benefit where it's a double benefit of lowering your CG and increasing the wheelbase. It's going to improve handling, but it's also gonna improve the maximum rate at which you can accelerate. Okay, now let's say we swap out our 1.0 frictional coefficient tires uh, for tires with a coefficient of friction of 1.1. So we found some stickier tires. We've increased the maximum acceleration from 0.416 to 0.45. And another thing which you'll often see, you know, front engine cars tend to be front heavy anyways, but for front wheel drive vehicles, it may be important to have some of that weight up front from an acceleration standpoint. So if you have a 60-40 weight distribution, 60% in the front, 40 in the rear, you're gonna be able to accelerate at 0.5 Gs, assuming you have the power. So that's a pretty big benefit uh, and all you're doing is simply changing where the center of gravity is. Uh, so from a design standpoint, you may want to design a front wheel drive car with something like a 60-40 split because that allows it to accelerate faster uh, if that's you know, one of the design parameters you're going for. 
So let's say you were to combine all of these just for fun, uh, each one of these uh, at each one of these rates. So these were all done individually, um, just one step at a time. If we were to do all four of these, we would increase it to 0.6 Gs, uh, which this front wheel drive vehicle could accelerate. Now you can also increase downforce on the vehicle as a whole, uh, but that comes, you know, it depends on speed. So at faster speeds, it'll have more of an impact. So thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to launch an automatic transmission vehicle. Oh man, that pulls. <laughs> Now the process itself is fairly straightforward, but we're going to be talking about some of the unique characteristics of how an automatic transmission works and that could help.